I've played chess my whole life. At the beginning, I wasn't so good. Now I'm alright. And it's because I've been training. Now you can challenge me at any age. Download the Play Magnus app and win the opportunity to play Magnus live and in person. Play the best. Play Magnus. Let's play. Welcome everyone to this uh, masterclass by uh, Arjan Tari, uh, number four in Norway currently, 17 years old. And uh, you can say he's uh, one of our, uh, our brightest stars in, the, in our chess country. Uh, you have been so kind that you're going to show us uh, one of your uh, best games, you can say. Tell us about why you have, what game it is and why you have chosen this game, Ariel. Yeah, so today I will show you my game from Gibraltar. This was uh, in the beginning of this year. So this is the strongest player I've ever beaten. That's why I'm going to show it. Okay. And who is it? Joltan Almasche. He's, uh, I think, number three in uh, Hungary. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was during the Gibraltar tournament, that is one of the, the biggest open tournaments in the world, basically, and one of the strongest yeah, open tournaments in the world. Yeah, it was a very strong tournament, mm. and uh, it was actually maybe the best tournament I ever played. Right. So this uh, win, uh, it meant a lot. Look at that. So. Yes. So this uh, win, uh, it meant a lot uh, to the tournament because mm. uh, in Gibraltar there are also huge money prizes mm. and uh, also made a GM norm in this tournament. Do you remember, did, uh, because this was in the, in the seventh round of the tournament, do you remember how many points you had at this moment? Uh, I'm not so sure, but I think uh, maybe I had Four and a half out of six. I think right, so, yeah. so you were doing quite well in the tournament already, and, yeah, then you, yeah, yeah. and you faced Almasi, who is a top grandmaster. Yeah, and actually yeah. after this game, I was I had more points than uh, Anan and Nakamura. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. You, we can we can look at the game. Uh, yeah. So I choose D four versus him. Did, did I should also ask, did you prepare for the, for, the, for him? How, how was your preparation when you faced such a strong player? I decided to try to surprise him. Right. Uh, so I played something which I have never played before. Right. So, and okay, he plays many openings, so it was not so easy to predict, but uh, I had looked at what he played before the game. Mm. And this is the um, this is the Nimso Indian. This is the I yeah. When he plays B6 here, it's the Rubinstein variation in the Nimso Indian. Right. And, and so how how much did you know about this? Uh, really, not much because uh, I just uh, had had a look at it before the game, but it was like only that day. Before that, I had never seen it. Mm. So I know here there are many moves. Black can play D5. And here it's called Ragozin. Black can play c5. I decided to play g3. Black can also castle here. But uh, it's uh, not that good because of uh, bishop g5. Right. Uh, most of the player wants to avoid this. Uh, wh why is bishop g5 a problem here? Because this pin is uh, annoying and mm. it's it's not so easy to get yeah, get, get out of it. Yeah, because yeah. black has already developed the bishop to b4. Yeah. Yeah. I actually castled here uh, in this position uh, last year, I think. And it was actually quite unpleasant to play this position with black. Mm. Mm. It's, um, it's not so easy. Yeah. Right. But b6 is, is very normal. Mm. And, and what is the idea with b6? You just want to develop your bishop and uh, fight for the e4 square. Mm -hmm. 
It's quite logical because this bishop wants to come out here. Right. So I knew he would probably play this because he played it before. So you're, you're still in your preparation. Yeah, at I'm this still point. in my preparation. Mm. So e3 is very normal here because I want to play bishop d3, queen c2, and castle. It's just uh, logical moves. Mm. I want to develop. Mm. So here he chose to play knight e4. The black can also play bishop b7. That's more normal. And it's all about the e4 square. It's all it? about the e4 square. Yeah, he wants <laughs> to fight pretty square. Mm. So I will develop my bishop with bishop d3. It's log logical that he plays um, castle. And I play like this. He plays d5 because, uh, as I said, black wants to fight for the e4 square. Mm. Black can also play this. Then I prepare knight a4. Knight a a4 seems yeah. like an odd move yeah. to, uh, to it make. It here. looks, it looks uh, a bit strange. But it's theory and it's played uh, and a and lot before. And I guess the idea is to go a3 yeah, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you don't want black to take here. So you want to disturb this bishop. Yeah. And uh, if a3 comes now, it's a disaster. So black should right. take, so he gets... Right. He home. gets it out, yeah. For his bishop, yeah. But then you have gotten rid of the uh, of the bishop on b4, yeah. yeah. So and here I can play a3 first or take. So mm -hmm. That would be another kind of game. Yeah. So I, I had prepared for that, but mm. uh, I knew he could also play knight e4. But my coach before the game he told me that uh, he would not go for this, so I was a bit surprised. So you prepared with a coach for this game as well. Yeah. Yes, I mean, usually when I play tournaments, I uh, mm. I sometimes talk to my coach. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And who is your coach? At that, at that, uh, when I prepared for this game, it was Yevgeny Romanov. Yeah, he's our Russian grandmaster. Yes. Yeah. So White is forced to play Queen C two here because Black is threatening to take. Mm. And now I'm threatening his knight, so he should protect it. And I continue to develop. Oh no, so attacking the e4. Uh, attacking the e4 knight. knight yeah. 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 So here he has to. He has to something. do something about the knight. Yeah. yeah, he has to do something about the knight. So I'm. Uh, so he took here. Sorry, he played f5 first. Yeah. But he could also take and play f5. It would probably lead to the same thing. Right. So he would protect his knight. And it's very logical that why it's castles here. Right. There is no other moves. And here, uh, I mean, I'm threatening to win a pawn, so he he should take on c3. If he takes with the knight, mm -hmm. it looks a bit strange because I get a good center. Right. And he his king he hasn't castle left. So white is doing great here. So he wants to keep his knight on e4. Yeah. Because he that knight is actually very strong for him. Yeah, he wants to say uh, that this yeah. knight is yeah. strong. And it compensates for my bishop. Yeah. And, and if white were to take that knight on e4, that yeah. would lead to a problem, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would lead to a disaster. Because uh, I mean now I don't have the bishop pair. Also, my pawn structure is not the best. Right. And this bishop will be very bad. This bishop is bad because it, it basically blocked blocking yeah, it's, by it's blocked by uh, yeah. white pawns. Yeah. And this uh, bishop is very good. Right. So black will play something like d6, c5 and just develop and yeah, black is just better because uh, this right. bishop is so strong. Right. Yeah. Uh, knight e2 is a very logical move. I want to change this strong knight. Mm. And also, I, I, it some lines gives you the possibility to play f3. Indeed, it? Yeah, yeah, f3. Yeah. That's what I want to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he has to do something about this knight. He can take if he wants. Then I will take, and as Tarja said, said I will probably play something like f3 e4. 
and play in the center. And uh, what black has is that uh, I still have a bit not the best pawn structure. Mm. So he can develop like this. But I like white's position because mm. uh, I have more space and I also have the bishop pair. Mm. So queen h4, um, just defends the knight and uh, he can take on d2 later. Right. So uh, uh, this was my preparation till this point, but uh, yeah, here I didn't uh, know anymore. Mm. Uh, because I, I didn't uh, think that he would play this variation. So here I was on my own. And so, but, but so was he. Yeah, but you have managed to get quite far in your preparation then. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's yeah, 10 yeah, moves. Yeah, 10 moves is decent, I guess. I'm not sure how, how grandmasters prepare and how successful they are, but 10 moves seems like... Uh, 10 moves, yeah. I mean, it's okay because he was also out of the book right. and I was satisfied with my right. uh, position. So you're feeling quite comfortable at this point? Yeah, I, I was a bit surprised that he went yeah. for this because yeah. it's very solid for white. Right. Uh, it's very difficult for white to lose and white is always slightly, mm. slightly better. And, and what is queen h4? What, what is it? Uh, do you have any idea why he was playing that? Queen h4 is to uh, protect here. Mm. So uh, he wants to... I mean, it just develops the queen. Right. And uh, it's not a bad square for the queen. And he will get connection between his rook when he develops a knight right. later. So it's either this or this. Right. Both are playable, but uh, this is more normal. Mm. So now I want to force him to take on d2, get that knight away because it's quite strong. Uh, <coughs> so I play f3. Why should play direct here? Because I don't know if I play something like... Uh, uh, some careless move. He will just, I mean, develop and yeah, yeah. Good, yeah. Uh, maybe it says d3 is also man, if they play man d5, I think, right? Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. If so g3, black can black maybe white. play knight g5, yeah. Yes, otherwise he moves a pawn and he falls for nothing, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's true. Okay, he could also take here, actually. With the point that uh, if I take here, he can give a check. And then take and take on c2, where black will be winning. But uh, I can take back. Maybe it's not so ideal that I have played g3 because yeah. this bishop is uh, quite strong now. But a knight g5, g5 is nicer, of course. Yeah, so besides that, I think f3 is very logical. Mm -hmm. So he has to decide if he wants to take or go back. I uh, I thought black has to take on d2. This was what I knew. Mm. And, and I thought that these kind of positions are slightly better for white because yeah, he has the bishop pair and will try to mm. play e4. But it's uh, not that clear because uh, black is also very solid and uh, he needs to get the, bish the knight on b8 out. Uh, yeah, yeah, play. but uh, uh, in the tournament that is going right now in Tal Memorial, mm. Anand showed that. I mean, he ha he made a very comfortable draw with black oh. in this position. Right, in this exact position. Yeah, actually. and yeah. and he didn't have any problems versus right. Li Chao. Yeah. So I'm uh, wondering if he had actually looked at this game, if he had uh, looked at this game before uh, playing. Uh, if he had, he had seen this game, if it's the same position. Oh, you mean the Anand game? Yeah. Oh, but uh, it was played like three, three, ah, yeah, three days ago. Oh, so, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. But I mean, in this position, it's played a, lo uh, a lot of times. Yeah. The conclusion is that white is uh, very solid, yeah. but uh, it's not so easy to win. But uh, he didn't take on d2, which surprised me. He played knight g5. So I understand that he doesn't want to take on d2 versus me because he's much higher rated and he wants to win. He was pl probably playing for a win at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he doesn't want to take uh, this position. I guess we can say that was a bad decision. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> probably, yeah. Because, sight. Yeah, knight g5 now is known to be very bad move. Uh, 
Okay, he just wants to try to deliver mate. It seems like uh, it was a bit too ambitious. Yeah, too uh, ambitious. But yeah. okay, it's 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 just because of one move. If I don't have this move, it's mm. Mm. it's not so bad actually. So yeah, I cannot play e4 now. Did you realize at that point that immediately that knight g5 of him is bad? No, I didn't realize it. I was surprised, but. I was trying to understand uh, yeah. what is happening. Right. I was considering many moves. I think this also. I mean, just to try to play e4 in a way. But I decided that it's probably not the best mm. because uh, it's, it's, it can be a bit dangerous, and it's not so clear what my bishop is doing here. Mm. Other moves, uh, I don't know, g3 <coughs> looked a bit strange to me. Let's say he goes here, and then he maybe continues with the same plan, or <coughs> let's say d6, knight d7. But okay, f4 here <coughs> is a very strong move, because this uh, knight, if it has to go back, mm -hmm. it's clear that Black's place doesn't make sense at all. Mm. Then it's really passive. But it was a lot of things to calculate when I played f4. So I thought like about 25, 30 minutes here. Mm. Because if I make f4 to work, I'm maybe close to winning. Uh, wha why are you close to winning? Is it because of the control in the center? Or yeah, we, we will see. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, there are many moves here to consider because uh, for instance let's say queen h3 it's a funny move but yeah and the idea is if it takes uh, then it's mate it's yeah. mate uh, you should look at that and that's actually a beautiful mate yeah it's a bit you have to you have to look at it a bit because it's a bit hard to realize that you play knight h3 and then you mate yeah yeah it's <laughs> but it's the idea is that you have a bishop on black has a bishop on b7 as well and it's controlling all the squares yeah, it's uh, not so yeah. bad bishop but uh, okay, white can play e4 here, yeah. and I'm winning material. Yeah. So he has to move the queen, and I take. I can. I should probably not take here because then he will win back the queen. But ah, yeah. Uh, probably just knight e4, and I'm winning because. Ah, oh, sorry, I can just take his queen. So. Mm. And also there was knight h3. No, no, some stuff like rook f6. I mean, it, it, do, it doesn't feel like it should work, but I had to calculate it. Mm. So I think here I can just play knight f3. And this bishop on b7 is a bit annoying for this you. This bishop on like b7 extreme is extreme very strong, strong yeah. 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 But I'm in time to hold everything together. So he cannot do anything now. Mm. So I think that uh, Zoltan thought that these things should work. Mm. Because he was a bit surprised when I played f4. Mm. I mean, he thought it should be something tactical. Yeah. Because if, if that doesn't work for him, then he's in real trouble. Yeah, actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think he didn't uh, yeah. understand that. Here, I think I could just play e4. Right. Actually. And what happens if he just takes it? Yeah, taking is logical, and then I take back. Yeah. And uh, Black uh, is still struggling with the knight on b8 and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. lack of development. This is always a problem, yeah. yeah. I mean, he doesn't have enough pieces here yeah. to He only has the queen and, attack, and the yeah. rook is, is still not in real play. Yeah. So there is not, not much to do. Also, queen g4. Uh, queen g4, I can play d5, I think. Yeah, this was the problem. 
Yeah, because in this position I take on c4 with check. Yeah. So he doesn't. Uh, I'm not getting mated. Mm. You, this wouldn't, you wouldn't want to get mated. Yeah. And if he does like this, I mean, I still probably. Yeah, I just take and I play bishop e4. Right. <coughs> and I just want a piece, and uh, his queen is under attack, so he's not winning anything. Bishop back. e4 is clever. Bishop e4, yeah. And then I take back, probably. Yeah. And I'm a piece up. So he, I mean, he found out that nothing works. Right. So he had to go back, which yeah. is very depressing. And that must be very depressing, considering yeah, yeah, that yeah. you have a... So this knight went from e4 to f7. Yeah. yeah. And now it's, it's really not a nice position for black, because uh, I will get everything I want. So and, and, and one of the most important points is that you have the white as the center, White has the center and black still doesn't have yeah. developed his yeah, so knight on b8. So I have the center, I have the yeah. bishop pair, and I have development yeah. advantage. Yeah. Right. So I could play e4 right away, but it made more sense to me to put this first. Forcing d6 and then e4. Yeah. And black is in a lot of trouble here. How did you feel when you had this position? Do you remember? Was it like a good, must have been a very good feeling? I was really happy, but yeah. uh, I was also a bit nervous. Right. Yeah. But you you d didn't think about that. Now I'm winning. You didn't have that feeling that no, you were winning yet. No, not at all. You were just focusing on playing. Very. I was really not understanding what he was uh, doing, but I was always I was always feeling that I had a very good position. Right. So he's trying to hold his position together. He plays knight h6 protects this f5 pawn. I mean, if he takes here, it's... I mean, it's just... I will just build up and yeah. attack. Yeah. And black is eventually going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very logical to bring the rook mm. to the game, because it was doing nothing on a1. So finally this knight gets out, but it's a bit too late. Mm. <laughs> so this g5 square is a nice, very nice square for my knight, so mm. I, I want to go there. And it's probably many things are good for me, but and this is very simple. And if he takes here now, Uh, should we ask what one should play? Or yeah, we, we can ask that and see if we, we can keep this composition and then maybe some people can can try to predict yeah, uh, yeah. the next move here for white. So what do you think white should play here? We can take a, take a minute or two to... Uh, 95. Yeah. 95, yeah. 95 wins a piece. So he cannot do that, he went to h5. And this is a strong move. My attacking e6 pawn and uh, my knight is very annoying for him. And what happens after uh, simply just protecting? Yeah, that's what he did. Yeah. So other things uh, doesn't make sense. <coughs> he can't play something like rook f6. Rook f6. Yeah. Is that possible? Can you play e5 here? Yeah, e5 looks very logical. Um, but I also, I'm not sure if I want to open for his bishop. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good point. But what happens after e5 then? Maybe he can take. And then rook g6. Yeah. I mean, it looks really strange. <laughs> it looks pieces, but his, his queen and the rook looks quite uh, offside, yeah. so to say. But the question is if I if this is good enough. Yeah. yeah. Bishop, e2 seems uh, Bishop e2 is seems like annoying, and then knight g4, you just play h3, I yeah, guess. Yeah, just play h3. Yeah. yeah. You, you can't even respond with h6 because you just. 
take yeah it. just here yeah. yeah yeah it's just loses for black yeah and uh, the queen gets trapped in case of yeah. it goes here yeah so that might be their reputation to right. rook f6 right yeah Okay, the rookie eight was the most uh, logical. Yeah, rookie eight was logical. Yeah, mm. probably many things are good for me in this position. Mm. I can also consider to take and play d five to kill this bishop. Yeah. It's always a bit. Uh, I mean, you when you play such strong players, you want to really play precise because. Uh, you think about, you, I'm having a good, great position now, but if I play inaccurate, I will, he will come back. Yeah, it, it's like it's like it's not yeah. enough to knock them down one, down yeah, yeah, one yeah. time, because so they will get up, yeah. you have to knock them down again. Yeah, so I was not, not sure about uh, at all about winning here. I yeah. was more nervous and trying to play, play really precise. Right. So I took here. Uh, my plan is that I want to open up the e-file, followed by playing d5 to shut down this bishop. And I also get knight e6 in here. And the knight is very pow powerful here. Right. So he must play rook f6, and now I play d5. Now you can really see how horrible black's position is, because this knight takes so many squares. This bishop is so bad. Now I was starting to understand how good my position is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think even I would understand that your yeah. position is good here. Yeah. So he doesn't know what to do. Uh, he gets desperate by playing c5, which does not help him at all. Uh, but I don't really see what else he should play. Because I'm threatening to take here. I was thinking maybe he will want to play something like this. But it's not re it's really not a move you want to make. No. Yeah. I can already think about starting to disturb his knight. Uh, or I don't know, any move should be good. He played c5. This is uh, an important point. Um, <coughs> so what do you guys think white should play here? So now as this pawn on C C7 is not threatened, he's, uh, he wants to play knight F8 mm -hmm. and change my strong knight. Mm -hmm. If he gets to do that, he's I'm still better, but it's not that easy to win. Mm. So here it is white to move? White to move, yeah. Rook d3. Take rook d7? Yeah, rook e3 is very logical. But what do you do after knight f8? Uh, by the way, uh, take on g7. I think I can take back. And uh, the, the problem is that the queen protects the rook. So rook e3, knight f8. Can you just play normally and just play rook e1 or something? And yeah, that's very logical. But uh, I don't, I, I don't want this bishop to yeah. be open up, yeah. I'm probably still better here. But yeah. It's not what I want. Maybe right. he can play queen g4. Sorry? Knight g4. Yeah, knight g4, rook h3, and. Yeah. We can see that my bishop on h3 is now it's really horrible. You, yeah. have, you, actually, you are actually the one with a bad bishop in this yeah, position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this can turn, uh, I mean, this can turn the tables. Yeah, yeah. So you still have to be careful, even though position here is good. Yeah, you yeah. Still yeah. Have to find the yeah. final blow, so to say. So if I play careless in this position and then he gets to play knight f8, it's mm. not easy at all anymore. Can't we play uh, the knight to 
Jesus for Friday? I can always do that, but uh, the thing is that my night, I like my night on E6 a lot. So I don't feel uh, for removing it. But Maybe queen a 4 that's, that's the correct answer, yeah. Queen a 4 is killing. Can you guys see what's, what happens if black plays yeah. knight of eight? Now, now you take on g7 and you're winning material. Yeah, this is very strong. You should take a look at actually show the lines just in case. Uh, yeah, so I'm threatening his queen and his rook. <laughs> you should probably take this knight. Yeah. And the point is that you're attacking the uh, rook, yeah. rook on the eight at the same time. So I'm winning an yeah. exchange. Yeah, and white is completely winning here. Yeah. <coughs> so what else should he do? <coughs> how, do you remember how much time you you spent on queen a4? Queen a4, uh, it was maybe, I'm not sure, maybe 10 minutes. 10 minutes, yeah. yeah. I mean, although you see the move, you want to double, do double check, check yeah. and be double sure. Double check and yeah. triple check. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see if s if there is something better. As yeah. Magnus would put it, double check, triple check. Yeah. Because Queen A4 was always on my mind, o also in this position. Right. Uh, I mean, before he played C5. Because sometimes even you can be greedy and take this pawn. Did you realize after Queen A4 that you were uh, winning? Or, or were you not thinking about that at that moment? I was not thinking about that. Mm -hmm. I was more nervous. Right. <laughs> Even more nervous, maybe, perhaps. Yeah, because he was also starting to get low on time, and mm -hmm. I was thinking that I'm probably winning. Uh, were you ever in time trouble yourself? No, he, he, he was. Mm. It was maybe I had like 26 minutes, and he had like 16, something mm. like this. Mm. I mean, he can play a passive move like bishop c8. bishop c8, yeah, right. He should probably do that. But here you can, can't you just take on a7? I can just take on a7 or may, did, maybe I want to play queen c6 because the d6 pawn is more important. Yeah. And if he goes here, I still have knight g7. And uh, here I probably also still have knight g7. Yeah, after king take g7, then. I take on e8. And, and if he takes my e. queen, I take his queen. I'm threatening three, yeah, you're three threatening pieces. Everything yeah, everything there. Yeah. <laughs> so it seems to me that queen c6 is very strong here. I don't know what, uh, because if he plays queen f7, then I'm winning a knight. Mm. Playing knight g5, he has to move the queen and I take. Yeah. Probably the best move would be. Yeah, I don't know, just to play this position, I think. Mm. But he got desperate and he took on e6. I remember uh, at this point I didn't understand anything. I thought first maybe I blundered something, but I couldn't understand. So I thought like everything should, I mean, both d takes e6 and rook takes e6. I was not understanding what his point was. Yeah. You're I'm just an exchange up. Yeah. Surprised. yeah, yeah. I thought he wanted to play this position and hope for a miracle. But right. Maybe a, yeah. a bit like desperate measures. Yeah, yeah. But when I saw that rook, t rook takes e6 works, uh, I was much more ready because uh, I don't, I, if I want to choose, I don't want to open for his bishop. Right. So this is more simple. So now I'm an exchange up. He takes. I can probably take on e6 when I'm winning. But I still don't want to open for his bishop, so this is much simpler to take on d7. Now I'm threatening his rook and his bishop. 
He played rook e3. Here, I guess you were quite comfortable that uh, you're winning. Ah, right? uh, here, yeah, I thought I'm completely winning now, yeah. I had seen that uh, if he takes my bishop, I can give a check here and then play rook e1. And I thought that this should be mate. Right. It doesn't have anything yeah, because desperate. Yeah, because if he tries to change rooks... You just queen e8, yeah. Yeah, I can always mate. Yeah. And there is really no way he can stop me from mating him. Uh, yeah, this is also mate. So he tried queen e8, um, which was the it was the best move. Mm. And here, here it, it I mean queen e8 is a very strong move actually because here I got really uh, shocked because I thought like now he's threatening my bishop. If I protect it, he can just take it. Yeah, and I'm getting mated. I'm a piece up, but uh, it's actually really dangerous for my king. Right. Can, can't you just play bishop b1? Yeah, bishop b1 is yeah. very normal, uh, yeah. but so I'm suddenly losing after rook e1. Oh, you're actually losing. Okay, this. I can go here and take draw, but if I don't have bishop d3, I'm probably losing. Oh, right. It's really surprising. Even with a piece up, you still have to be a bit careful. Yeah, because a move like this, mm -hmm. uh, because he's threatening queen e3, yeah. which will deliver mates. He can just take it, give a check, and take here and take my bishop. Yeah, and then it's probably a draw or something. Yeah. Is it draw? Is it draw? draw? Yeah. 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 Uh, I think I think actually it's. Maybe you have some perpetual there. Like you have some perpetual. Ah, maybe yeah. It, it doesn't really matter because y you you <laughs> you should be winning so. Yeah. But okay, maybe he doesn't oh, yeah. need to take. Maybe he can try to give some yeah. checks and yeah. annoy me. But but that just shows there is a possible consequence if you are. Yeah. Uh, uh, what I think is that when forward. when he played this move, he seen he maybe he saw that far that he has. Yeah. Um, he has queen eight, yeah. and he thought it works. So what should White play here? Queen. C6. queen. Queen c6, right. This is the only move in the position. It's a really nice move because uh, I want to cha uh, change the queens because I'm a piece up. And now, I mean, he cannot take my bishop because his queen is hanging. If he takes here, I get a dangerous pass pawn. And there's not really... There what you no can defense? do, yeah. Can you play something like queen e7? Queen e7, yeah. I, t I thought that he would play this if he wanted to, to play on. Yeah. If I take on f5, he, I'm pro he probably holds on by queen f8. So, I should probably not do that, but okay, I should check first. And then take on f5 and it's over. Mm. I thought he would try to play this position, but I mean, uh, it's a piece up, so. I think I would uh, right. have won it. Right. So queen c6 and... Uh, yeah, queen c6 yeah. just forces resignation, actually. Yeah, he actually yeah. resigned here. Yeah, there is no move. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, he cannot do anything. I'm just piece up, yeah. So I, his mistakes was uh, basically just knight g5. Mm. And he got, he should take on d2 and take this position. Right. And here it just was horrible. But uh, I think I played really precise and I gave him no chances. Mm. Is this the best game you ever played? It's not so long game. Uh, no. <coughs> you can say that I only played uh, natural moves. Yeah. I but that, that's also what you see when, when uh, the great masters yeah. like Magnus Carlsen, it's also seemingly making just normal moves and then yeah. they just collapse. But I'm happy that I didn't uh, allow anything any counterplay, right. which would usually maybe happen mm. when uh, I mean when a lower player plays against a right. stronger, yeah. So uh, thank you for that, uh, Ryan. Uh, 
uh, perhaps while we have you here now, uh, you should talk a little bit about uh, the, uh, the chess Olympiad that uh, you took part in. And uh, you were an important part of the Norwegian team secur securing fifth place. Uh, can you tell us a bit about how that was to, to play in the Olympiad team this year? Uh, it was my first Olympiad on the first team. Mm -hmm. So I played also in Tromso, but that was for the second team. Mm. So it was like the first reel. Mm. Um, no, it, was, it was huge for me to play there. It was a lot of fun. And mm. uh, uh, tell us a little bit about how, uh, how, how did you uh, spend the days for the team? Did, were you together all the time, preparing? And what were you actually doing uh, in the days before the rounds and after the rounds and so on? We were mostly preparing on our own, but mm. uh, I mean, we, we had a walk with the team mm. two hours before the game. Mm. And there we shared what we were going to play mm -hmm. and were discussing a bit and if anyone had questions we just asked Magnus. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and was he helpful in, in preparing you all? Yeah, I would say he was definitely helpful because mm. I mean you can imagine uh, any chess question you have you can ask him yeah. in openings. So L like uh. what kind of chess questions were you asking? Were it, was it like how uh, what kind of player that guy is, what I should play against him, and so on, or how is it? Uh, yeah, something like that, yeah. yeah. Or, let's say, uh, uh, what do you think about open Spanish, or something right. like this. Yeah. Right. And I can imagine he gave pretty good answers and uh, prepared you very well. Yeah, I mean, it was not, I mean, he didn't, he cannot answer everything, but. Right. Uh, because that you have to actually play the yeah. game. Yeah, that, that much he knew, he answered us. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. he was honest. Right, yeah. right. But this was uh, really nice for me to play in a team with Magnus. Mm. Yeah, he is a good team player. Mm. And uh, you actually qualified for the World Team Championship, which is also historic. Uh, how, do you, how do you see that? We actually didn't know before we... Uh, uh, came to Norway. Yeah, that we, actu we actually you? qualified. Yes, I got uh, really happy because I mean, it's only ten teams in the world team yes. championship, and it's huge to qualify there for Norway. Right. And I can imagine you are all uh, the same players who will play in, uh, in. It's going to take place in Russia, I guess. Yeah, in Khantimansisk. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's the same players. Uh, ah, pr th that pr probably hasn't been decided yet. But yeah. uh, probably something like the same, yeah. Right. I think Magnus said that he will play, mm -hmm. so that's very important for us. Yes. Uh, also, uh, Arjan, you're, you're attending, um, you're attending a, a chess school with uh, Simon Agdestein as the coach. Yeah. Uh, how is, how is that? Tell us a little bit about that. How is, how is it to go in a chess class? I think we're uh, uh, really lucky in Norway to have s a chess school mm. because in this way you can combine chess and school which is definitely not easy. Mm. Uh, so I think I would face big problems if, I, uh, if we didn't have this school. Mm. But now I can travel as much as I want and uh, play chess and still uh, don't have that much problems with school because you can uh, Take the tests and so on when you want, and uh, it's just much easier than a normal right, school. Right. Um, and and how is uh, how is Simon as a coach? Wha wha how is he helping you to improve in in chess? I, I think he's a really good coach uh, because he knows a lot about uh, chess. I mean, he has been on the top, mm. so he he kn he knows what it takes, and uh, I mean he just. Uh, uh, has a very good understanding right. and the way he teaches us mm. it's uh, good right uh, uh, so it's always uh, helpful he has always something to right. uh, i have al always something to learn from him mm. uh, what is y you're already uh, you're 17 and you're already a grandmaster you're a uh, uh, big talent you, what is say something about uh, what is your goal in chess how, how, how far do you think you can reach I hope I will uh, reach as far as possible, but uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I take step by step. Mm. You think you can uh, reach uh, top 10 in the world? 
difficult to say, but mm. uh, I mean, okay, it's it sh should be possible, but you have to really work uh, mm. like in hell. Yeah. 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 How much are you working? Okay, it it depends, but uh, I don't know. Sometimes one hour, sometimes seven hours. It uh, it really depends. It's mm. not easy to say. Mm. I mean, sometimes you don't feel for working chess. You want to do something else that right. day. Right. So, yeah. Uh, Arjan, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Uh, perhaps you should, if there's anyone who else wants to ask any questions to Arjan, uh, can do that while we have him here. Anyone? Mm. I was wondering if you could take a look at the first round game that actually won the Solar Prize for most Yeah, of maybe you can do that. Yeah, we sure. Take a quick look at uh, sure. uh, that game as well. That. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, let me see. Because that was you actually won a prize for that game. Uh, yeah, how yeah. much was it? Uh, one thousand crowns. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hundred and ten euros. Let me see. I think we have it here. Uh, one moment. Uh, Wasu Chess Festival is here. I think it's was that the first yeah. game? The first round was not here. Yeah, I think. the first one was not here. Okay, uh, then we can quickly check. Uh, so uh, right. <coughs> Let's see. Yeah, I know, I know. I no. want to download everything here. This chess space is much bigger. There we have, was it this one? Yeah, yeah. it was this one. Yeah. yeah. So this was the first one against uh, Ingve Götterstam Fossheim, who is, who is uh, a young player as well. Yeah, young player. So, uh, so I didn't prepare for uh, this game. I came after my school. Mm. So I played the Karokan and... Did you know okay, anything I guess about him before? No, okay, I've seen him before. Mm. But you didn't uh, know how, what kind of player he is or, or think about that? You just played normally? Uh, I, di I don't think that much no, about no. I mean, I think I should beat uh, 1800 relatively easily <laughs> without uh, right. thinking about such things. <coughs> So I just took it there. Yeah, but this is uh, a bit passive. Yeah, I mean, bishop d3, I don't know if my opponents uh, have analyzed Karokan before, but okay, bishop d3 is not ambitious at all. I usually want plays like this. And there is a lot of theory here. Black can play, many moves, c5, knight e7. Ninety-seven. Yeah. So, I mean, it's normal to play h four. Here, black can play many moves, but mm. h five is the most normal, and then white plays bishop d three. Right. This is more normal, but uh, bishop d three here is. I think black should equalize quite comfortable. Okay, mm. um, so I take. And I play e6. It's just that you can imagine black has a French, but without this bad bishop on c8. Yeah, so it's that, like that a bishop is uh, often a problem for black. Yeah, it's so it's like a dream yeah. French, yeah. yeah. I mean, I can play c5 here probably. And queen b7, you just play queen d7. Sorry? Yeah, queen, queen, b f queen b5, queen d7. Yeah. yeah. Maybe he can take, but anyway, I it seems logical to me to develop my pieces first. Right. Uh, yeah, it was a bit strange to play this and go back to e3. Mm. Okay, so here I already have a in shade if I think or. Mm. So black comes out of top from the open. Yeah. Um, so I have a nice knight and uh, nice pieces. This bishop is not so good. 
but it's uh, always not so easy to win these positions because I think it's objectively equal. Mm. But and White didn't get any advantage from that. Yeah, def yeah, White did definitely not get any advantage. Mm. So what Black wants is to play, uh, try play on C5. Right. I can probably play C5 here, but I didn't see why not to play A5 first to uh, force A4. Because if he doesn't play it, I will play A4 and take some space here, which yep. I want. So Queen B6, I'm planning to play C5. Uh, maybe it was better to do, do this. Because his knight on b3 controls the c5 square. Right. Now I just felt that I got everything that I wanted. The b3 was surprising. I thought he should take. And. I'd uh, maybe take. But it seems like. Uh, it, it just, I mean, it, it looks just nice for. It seems like a variation of the French. Uh, when, you, when you get the uh, bishop on c5 there, and it uh, seems very comfortable for black. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think. Well. Uh, yeah, probably here I can just take the pawn. Yeah. And that knight on c5 is comfortable. Yeah. Or he has a perpetual here, maybe. Uh. That's the problem. Ah, uh, you have queen b4 then. then you can move oh, I can escape, yeah. yeah. you can escape. Or maybe not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it seems like a draw. So, yeah, I thought he, he should play something like this. Yeah. But... Uh, you don't have to take on there, b3. There is no doubt. Uh, black, black has a very nice position. Yeah. yeah. He played b3. I mean, it's very logical to bring my rook. Yeah. And in the end game, I think it's very nice for black because all my pieces are very strong, and he has some weaknesses. Mm. Okay, G four is it's not a bit uh, yeah too yeah. ambitious, but yeah. uh, um, it seems like a bit desperate. Yeah, it, it's it's desperate. Uh, but I guess my opponent was. I mean, it's difficult for White to play here. Yeah. He can never save his bishop because of g5. Yeah. So. So here I'm probably already clearly better. Yeah. Because I will win the battle of the c file. I mean, I'm threatening to take here. Yeah. And uh, so it wins the pawn. He has to do something. Right. C4 is logical. And. Uh, yeah, I can play. Yeah, I took here and played knight b6, forcing c5. Right. Then I go back and play b6 again. So, right. And let's say this position. Okay, uh, he has to go back. He has to move uh, away from the pin. But then you still have the the C file. I have the C file and I also have the bishop and yeah. everything is nice. Yeah. But he went here. Uh, so his point is that um, I mean, if if I take his pawn here, he wins back on B seven. So that's why I play bishop before here. Right. Now I'm threatening to win his pawn. He plays. And that bishop is very nice on on B four as well, taking on squares. Yeah. So anyway, he had to play c5 here. Mm. And now b6 comes. And I get to c5. And mm. uh, someone told me after the game that um, uh, white should play like this. Just to try to stop b6. But maybe it comes anyway. Oh, that's interesting. And the idea is taking on b6 and you can take back. Yeah, I can take back with the knight. Or also maybe I can try to attack this pawn uh, on a5. 
so it, it will get weak. Okay, mm. anyway, um, I got to play b6 and I just have a uh, very good position. I'm close to winning. And okay, here I got to sacrifice uh, an exchange, which yeah. was it which really is nice. necessary? Okay, knight rook takes d3, but was it really necessary to take there? Maybe no, maybe not necessary, but I, I didn't see any risk, and I thought like uh, yeah, of course, if, if there is yeah. no risk, then why not? Yeah, and it, it looks fun, mm. <laughs> and I wanted to fight for the game price. Ah, yeah, that's <laughs> why you were playing that. Interesting. Yeah, I thought why not. Because I have the C file, I have a good bishop, and yeah. my pawns will start to roll. So you have two pawns for the uh, exchange. Yeah, two two pawns, but yeah. his pieces are very bad. Yeah, badly placed. So white can actually white can not do anything here because I mean my pawns will just start to go. Right. So is there any any save for white in this position? Uh, actually, not. This no. is their problem. Yeah. Uh, you just make normal moves and you advance the pawns. Yeah, also the computer confirms that uh, white has no defense. Right. And in practice, it's. Uh, I mean, in a, in, a <laughs> in a practical game, it's even more difficult. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I just. Uh, yeah. You basically uh, just advanced your pawns. I, I, ju and I just uh, advanced my pawns yeah, and. You can't do anything. Yeah, I just won, yeah. Yeah, and then you resigned after. Uh, yeah, so it was yeah. very straightforward. Yeah. 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 I just uh, got a nice position out of the opening and. Yeah. So, should we give an applause to Arian for the lesson? Thank you very much, Arian. Thank you.